Homemade taco soup is full of hearty goodness. It's wholesome, it's great for a weeknight meal. It goes together quickly and it makes the whole family happy. Let's make it. For this taco soup, we're using the flavors that we know and love, those homey, cozy, Midwestern, taco-y soup flavors. And we're gonna make it pretty simple though. So we're starting with some onion and I'm chopping up some jalapeno too. Now, always remember, Jalapeno can have different heat levels, especially depending on the time of year. Grocery store ones to me can have different heat levels. If you're scared of heat at all, you could change this out and do a green pepper. The flavor of jalapeno though is always superior and I will always say that. So if you want, make sure to take out any of the pith and the seeds. That's where a lot of your heat is gonna sit. You know, sometimes at home when I am home canning hot peppers, this is how I test how hot one is. I'll touch it to my tongue. These ones I wouldn't be too worried about, but some of the ones I grow, it gets really hot. So you can test by just maybe even, you know, a little bit of a seed to see how hot it is. But removing that pith and the seed is gonna help take away a lot of that heat. And yet we're gonna leave the flavor of the actual jalapenos, and that's what I like. Because jalapenos have a distinct flavor. I'm gonna say they're almost more fruity than a bell pepper would be. There's more nuance to them. A bell pepper is just kind of a sweet, slightly peppery flavor. Jalapeno has a lot more flavor, which I like. So we have that chopped up and we're gonna do our onion and our peppers. And I have some oil that's sitting on the stove. It's been heating. You know, anytime you're using some type of cookware, heating the oil beforehand, you always ask me like, how do I not get things to stick when I'm using stainless steel, say? You have to heat them properly and make sure you then heat your oil or whatever you're using too. So I'm gonna put in now the pepper, and always when I wanna saute something and sweat it out a bit, I don't really wanna add a lot of color, but I am going to add some salt. Salt actually brings out some of the naturally occurring water that's in those vegetables, but also it's gonna season them at the first time. So these have been sauteing for a bit and getting softened. Now we're not trying to get color on them, we're trying to get them softened. It all kind of creates layers of flavor and gives the right texture, so you can see they're the onions are getting translucent. See how they're turning a little bit almost opaque or clear? That's perfect. So now into that hot oil mixture, we're gonna add our seasonings because I like to add these to oil because it really brings out their flavors. So we have chili powder, we have ground cumin, which is in chili powder, but I wanna up it, and then some oregano, which really works well with these flavors. And when we put that down in that mixture and stir it into that oil, it really just enhances and makes sure that all those essential oils are just like brightened and brought out. And that to me is what's essential here. It sounds weird, but this one little step, it makes a huge difference in the flavor. So as I'm stirring that, you know, it smells amazing already. We're gonna also add in our ground beef. Now this is just, you could use another, you know, ground turkey, ground chicken. The beef adds a nice hardiness to it. If you use a really healthy, well-raised beef, it has a lot of great omegas in it, and it's a great protein to add. So I'm gonna break this up into small pieces and let it brown. So this has been cooking. The meat is now fully browned, that's the important part. And you know, depending on what type of beef you use, ground beef, have different amounts of lean. It could have more oil or juice if you need to drain some of that. I like to use usually around 92% lean, so I don't drain any off. Um, we're gonna put in now some tomatoes. Now diced tomatoes, I always love to use the fire roasted diced tomato because they have the little bits from actually roasting that have the little black bits in them. And so that's actually more flavor. And that to me is a beautiful thing. If you can add more flavor, why wouldn't you? Then we have pureed tomatoes. That's gonna add a richness to it, obviously. It's gonna have a thickness to it. Now, I then add some chicken stock. You wanna cut it. So sometimes my chicken stock, instead of just adding it, I will add it to my, first my like things of tomatoes so I can really clean them out and rinse them out. You know, there's so much tomato goodness in there. If not, I'll put a little bit of water in the cans and shake them and make sure I get it out with that because you don't wanna waste any of that. So that's that base, but now we wanna add in some black beans that I did drain them, rinse them to get off you know, any of that goo that was on them. It's just a little bit more clean for the soup. And then some corn. Now we home freeze our corn. You know, I cut it off every summer when we're growing it freeze it, we do it as a family. I have a video that you can always check on how I do that, but I like frozen corn. So if you're gonna use just, you know, purchase corn, go to the freezer section. I think it has more flavor. So we're gonna stir this together, let it come to a simmer, and then just wait for a while as it simmers until it all melds together. So the soup has been simmering, which is to heat everything through and really let the flavors become one. That's what you want. You know what I love about this soup is it's really kind of just a dump together and go. And to me, the special part comes in the toppings and what you can do with it. But look how hearty it is. That's what I love about a soup. Even though it's kind of a broth or a tomato based soup, it has beautiful pieces of meat and tomato and beans and corn. 
and it all comes together in such a beautiful way. So just like other things, once we get the soup plated up, look at how beautiful that is. But this is the fun part to me, is you could have a buffet of all the extras. So to me, cilantro, and I know some people hate it, that's fine, don't put it in if it tastes like soap to you. I feel bad for you, but don't put it in. Um, I would always have some avocado. That's just me, I love avocado. You could put, I have cheese here, you could put shredded cheese in it. Kind of whatever you want, sour cream would be really good too. And of course I forgot my spoon. So we're gonna walk over as I get my spoon. I love a soup that is hearty, is warming, but also just is a meal. And this is totally a meal and that's what I love about it. We have to try it. Mm. Mm, that's good. It like warms you down to your soul and I love that. What's delicious here is you have the brightness of tomatoes in multiple ways since we use the puree tomatoes, but yet you have pieces of tomato. It's hearty enough. If you notice all those chunks of things, one of the best ways to eat it is take a chip and look at this. It's almost like a dip. You can eat the chips with it and pull up pieces of just deliciousness. I love that. This is a great wholesome soup. It's a great family soup. Kids, adults together will love it, especially that you can mix and match what you put on top. Spice it up with your favorite salsas. Put whatever you like in it and it's ready to go. So what do I hope you do with this? I hope you make the soup. I hope you have a hearty meal that's delicious, comforting, and easy. That's the point, and that's the point of soup. Share these videos around so other people can see. This is super easy if I can do it. Anybody can do it and check my website, wiseguide.com. That's where this recipe is. You can print it off, you can save it, do whatever you want with it, but most of all, you can make it. That's the important part.